Hey, I've got a secondary YouTube channel now. If you guys are looking for long form content, especially like my Pokemon Legends Arceus playthrough in its entirety, go ahead and hit that link in the top of the description. It'll take you over to um, my Twitch VOD channel and make sure to subscribe if you're into that type of content. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got another fun match for you. As always, if you enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel and uh, I do appreciate you guys. Anyways, I'm working with a brand new team here. It's actually really fun to use if it can get to work correctly. Uh, my opponent over there is working with, you know, the general pretty scary stuff. You know, it's really hard for me to deal with things like the Milotic, um, the Dragonite, and just overall, very scary squad to go up against. I'm going to end up leading off with the Jumpluff. Now, Jumpluff has a little bit of a highlight in this vid because this dude absolutely eats your children and you got to definitely be aware of this fucking puffball. So I lead off with the jump puff. They actually end up leading with their Milotic. Now I assume they probably expected me to lead off with the Steelix, which is kind of uh, the obvious option of this squad. So turn one, I'm thinking I'm just gonna go right for a, a nice little sleep powder here, put you to sleep, and hopefully make this thing a little easier to deal with. Because like I said, uh, this Pokemon in particular definitely gives a lot of problems to my team. So I end up going for the Leech Seed here. I'm thinking this thing, there's no way you wake up turn one and hit me with an Ice Beam. So it's probably a pretty safe play. But he just absolutely breaks my balls and does wake up turn one and then hits me with <laughs> an Ice Beam. So I am actually able to live that, which is amazing. Four times weak to Ice. Death says, I don't give a shit, bro. As uh, I'm actually able to now take some health from this thing after some leftovers. Um, I'm chilling in the yellow, but really annoying this thing wakes up turn one because as you'll see uh, It does activate its flame orb now every Milo tick is gonna be working with that Which is why it was really nice to put it to sleep so I could kind of prolong that uh, Marvel scale, but um, I don't really have anything any business staying in here as I'm gonna go ahead and u-turn jump Pluff is super important for me in this matchup uh, looking at things like I'm able to outspeed literally everything on their team and sleep powder support is Seriously, extremely valuable, especially for like the general build of the team that I'm working with. So, I don't really have a lot of options to switch into my low tick, but Quagsire is the kind of dude who is pretty chill with going into anything, as he does end up going for the Ice Beam again. That is fine. Quagsire eats that up and takes some, uh, some health back from the Leech Seed. Now, this thing is not carrying leftovers, and that's because this is actually a Choice Banded Quagsire. Uh, you may have been able to tell from the team preview, but shout out to the comments. I did take this recommendation um, from someone telling me to use a Choice Banded Quagsire. So here we are. Also, he doesn't have a damn nickname uh, because they wouldn't let me name this thing Balls, and then I just forgot to name it something else. So <laughs> uh, I go for the Earthquake there. Uh, the Banded Damage is looking nice on my Lotig here. as uh, It's very close range for this burn to take it out, but unfortunately, it's not quite going to do it after the Leech Seed. But... Milotic being in the red is honestly just super nice. Even with Recover, it's not going to be able to stall me out here. And Milotic is basically taken care of as it does actually end up going for that Recover. Just because every Milotic's got to remind you that, hey, I'm an asshole, by the way. In case you forgot, I like to do this stuff. Uh, Quagsire never forgets. And I go for the Earthquake there. Get that big boy damage. And luckily after the Seed and the Burn damage, that is going to take care of old Venus over there. So that's actually one of the bigger threats to my team gone. And all I had to pay was like half of my jump Jumpluff. But, I mean, that's fine. Because Jumpluff, you know, he doesn't care. He, as you'll see later, dude does not care. Anyway, uh, they're going to end up bringing in the Gardevoir on a free open switch here. And now that tells me this thing probably has Energy Ball. Um, I know that Quagsire could likely live most any of the other attack if it's not like choice specs or something. Um, I don't really want to risk it because Quagsire looks great against this dude's team. Uh, it's nice against the Dragonite because I have Unaware, plus it's nice against the Infernape, and overall Quagsire is just the kind of fella you keep around. Uh, so I'm actually going to end up switching into the motherfucking Tooth Fairy here, ready to just steal your teeth and add to his collection of teeth on his weird little head banana thing. I don't know. But they go for the Moon Blast, not even Energy Ball, um, which is fine. Does a big, a, kind of a load of damage there, which, you know, hurts, but at least I know I can take two, and then I can threaten this thing out with an Iron Head. Um, I'm knowing that it's pretty likely that they're going to switch here, um, but it's not really worth me over-predicting against this Gardevoir, just because that thing is, again, another threat to my team, and I just go right for the Iron Head here. Of course, they do end up switching out, as they end up bringing in the Donphan. Um, I think it's obviously going to take nothing from the Iron Head, and Donphan is a Pokemon that has really coming back into popularity with these uh, this Gen 4 remake. 
Um, it, it's actually a pretty pretty annoying Pokemon to deal with, but we love my boy Don Fan, so we let it slide. Anyway, um, I obviously can't stay in here. There's really nothing I can do. Now I'm expecting him to probably just set up the Stealth Rock here, which I figure it should be a safe switch into my Quagsire and then hit it with a real hard uh, choice banded waterfall, which should be nice. But he actually ends up going for the knockoff as uh, that is really annoying. Gets a pretty big chunk of damage and knocks off my choice band. So Quagsire no longer looks as cool as he once did and I'm able to hit, you know, half as hard. So um, it is a bummer, but I do need to essentially just still go for the waterfall here. I know I can take any attack this thing throws at me. As they end up going for the earthquake, it does knock me down quite a damn bit. But like I said before, Quagsire is an absolute survivor. And I am able to go for the waterfall, which does uh, not enough damage, which says something about freaking Don Fan over here. Still eating some leftovers and well above half, and I'm like, damn, that's uh, really missing my choice band here. But I just go for it again. There's really nothing else I can do. I at least got this thing to half. Plus, you know, it doesn't have its sturdy activated, so I can take care of this thing uh, a couple different ways. As Quagsire goes down, that is a huge kind of bummer to my vibes over here because in that Quagsire. We kind of had some big plans for the rest of this match. It was going to be great against that uh, against that Dragonite, but no longer have that option. So now I decide to go into the Puthy, and <laughs> Mike Tyson's Kitty comes out, and this is actually a different type of Persian as I once used. Uh, this one's actually Choice Specs with um, moves that kind of take advantage of its Technician ability. As I go for the Water Pulse there, I end up getting a crit. Uh, regardless, it knocks out the Don Fan, and uh, Special Attacking Persian is OP. Watch out. <laughs> As, um, it's actually great to get rid of that thing, mostly because it actually didn't get up any Stealth Rock. Um, so I'm not going to be as punished for all my switching, and you just you love to see it. So, on the free switch, he ends up bringing in Magnazone, and I think Steelix is a pretty easy switch into this thing if it goes for an electric attack. Of course, he knows I have this thing in the back pocket, and he just ends up going for the Flash Cannon, which does a huge amount of damage, and I'm immediately thinking Choice Specs. You know, I'm no... I'm no, I'm no expert with damage from uh, Magnazones on Steelix, but I'm thinking that's that's a little bit too much for my my taste there. So here I'm gonna end up going for the Stealth Rock, and that is because there's a couple Pokemon on their team that really does not want to switch into rocks, and this Derpy Dragon over here is number one, and that's because um, if it came into Stealth Rock damage, it would get rid of its multi-scale ability, which really helps in taking care of Dragonite. Because dude, I don't care who you are or what you got. This thing is an absolute threat, literally no matter what. So, uh, this thing is going to end up dragon dancing up here, and that is quite scary because now it's able to outspeed and hit extremely hard. Um, but I do end up going for the gyro ball just basically to get rid of that multi-scale ability, and actually able to do a pretty solid chunk in the process. So, I'm thinking at plus one and at the health that Steelix is at, I'm a pretty bulky gold chain over here. I'm talking... I'm, I'm well fed, so I should be able to live one Earthquake at this range, as he does go for it, and Goldick says, not today, bitch, I do end up living, which is amazing, uh, and that allows me to then fire off some more balls at this thing, and I actually end up getting a crit to take care of it, so, that is an unfortunate crit, um, it would have come close regardless, plus, had that not happened, he likely would have just taken care of Steelix, and then I had full-on, uh, defensive wall wheezing to come in, take an attack, and then kill it with a sludge bomb, so... Just save myself some extra steps there. Anyway, back comes the UFO, and at this health, Goldix is not going to be doing anything of value, so I basically just stay in and let fate decide what happens to him. Um, you guys remember when Magnazone got access to Hidden Power? Or like when, you know, Hidden Power was a move in general? Like, why did they take that from us, man? It really, <laughs> it really is so annoying. Um, anyway, Steelix being dead is actually kind of nice, because now I get a free switch into my absolute Satan of a Puffball. Um, so I'm going to go for a Sleep Powder here. I know that I outspeed, and I do connect on that Sleep Powder, which is amazing. I'm thinking, okay, all you got to do is just stay asleep. My team really does not like this Magnazone. At this point in time, this Magnazone can for sure um, it kind of sweep me and be annoying. So getting this thing to sleep is important, and now I'm thinking, okay, you're definitely going to stay asleep for like at least a turn here. You should at least allow me to get my freaking Leech Seed off, and kind of the same situation that I had um, with the Melotic, but I don't, I, I don't trust sleep anymore. It's, it's a, they always wake up turn one for me. I don't know what the hell the deal is, but I go for the lead seed here. Um, I really kind of need to whittle this thing down to the point where a flamethrower from Weezing will take care of it. Uh, it does actually end up staying asleep, which is great. I mean, only his like shoulder eyes are, are sleeping. His, his main one still kind of just 
I just sleeping with his eye open, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but it's great to see uh, that, you know, sleep's doing its thing here. And Jump Pluff is being the absolute annoying asshole that it's built to be. This one is not actually Substitute. I probably should have carried Substitute on this one. Um, but I opted for the Energy Ball just for damage. But uh, now I'm going to decide to switch into Persian. I'm thinking, okay, please stay awake. It actually ends up waking up. Goes for that Flash Cannon. And that is going to kill me. So that sucks. Persian was going to be able to get... Uh, at least some chip damage off on that thing to make it killable later. I also know that Mawile can take an attack from this thing likely, but uh, I can't hit it that hard in return, so it's uh, it, it pretty much relying on my Cotton Ball here. Also, if you guys are familiar with some of the channel lore, you know that I absolutely hate Jumpluff as a Pokemon, but only when I'm playing against it. When, it, when it's on my side, he's a pretty alright guy. So <laughs> I bring back the jump Jumpluff. I do land another Sleep Powder, so I'm sitting 3 for 3 on Sleep Powders and pretty much about to go buy a Lotto Ticket at this point. Um, but that is great, because now this basically allows me um, to sap him some more and get some health back with the, with the leftovers combined uh, with the Leech Seed. You know, I'm looking pretty solid. And death, is, death has really come back to life here, as, you know, turn 1, I literally... <laughs> was like in the red, um, but I'm slowly getting it back. So I decide I'm just gonna go for an energy ball He's probably not gonna wake up turn one I can get some minuscule chip damage and if jump left needs to go down. That's fine I can then just switch into wheezing hopefully take an attack. I mean if this thing specs it, it definitely hurts and uh, Magnus I've never been so afraid of a Magnazone. I swear to God um, but after <laughs> the energy ball damage and the lead seed I'm actually got this thing below half and I'm like near full health so this actually can work out here. I'm just going to go for an energy ball again, thinking, please stay asleep, Jumpluff, if there's anything I need from you, bro. It's I need your sleep powders to be effective, for the love of God, to be able to win this match. Um, I go for that one. I'm actually able to get the special defense drop, and it stays asleep. So, I know that this Magnazone is absolutely punching the air right now. It always seems like, literally, whenever you play against the Jumpluff, you're just, you're just never able to touch it. And that's literally why <laughs> I've always hated this Pokemon for so long. It's seriously one of the most annoying things ever, especially when it's like a sub-seed set uh, with Sleep Powder. And it get, by God, I, I don't wish this upon my worst enemy. I'm very sorry to, for doing this to you, but, you know, I, doing what had to be done. I, I brought the Jump Pluff, and I'm, I gotta make use of the dude. So, uh, one more Energy Ball with the Spadef Drop does take care of Magnazone. And just the nail in the coffin is that now Jump Pluff is at absolute full health. And that shit is hilarious. So, in comes Gardevoir. Uh, I know that I can take pretty much a t any attack from this thing regardless of what happens as long as it's not a crit. So I'm thinking, alright, fuck it, I'm just going to go right for another Sleep Powder. I really don't have any reason not to. Uh, it does actually end up outspeeding me, telling me it is a Choice Scarf Gardevoir, which is very scary. Uh, I do take the Psychic, and I land another Sleep Powder. Now I know the dude sitting at the other end of his Nintendo Switch is upset right now, and I swear to God, I'm, I'm very sorry. But it's pretty much the only way I can, <laughs> can win this match. Um, so I'm really doing everything I can. And it makes sense, as they went for the Psychic, they want to lock it into Psychic because uh, that obviously does take care of Weezing, and Mawile, yeah, I think, could actually take one. But I go for the Leech Seed here, pretty much just same old song and dance with Jumpluff. Uh, I should probably actually consider bringing potentially like a Swords Dance. One. I don't even know if he gets access to good physical grass moves. Now that I think about it, I feel like they took Seed Bomb away from everything. Um, so maybe this dude is not even an option. But maybe we mess around with some different uh, Jump Pluff sets just to highlight this dude further. But um, it seems like my best option is pretty much just to stay in here, do my same old shit, throw some balls at him. And that kind of seems like the recurring theme of today's match. Um, <laughs> not able to do much damage. But what Jump Pluff lacks in damage, he makes up for in absolute annoyance. Um, just because, especially now with all this recovery, I can take another Psychic, and uh, there's essentially no way that this Gardevoir kills me. Now, their last Pokemon is going to be Infernape, and since I'm a plus speed nature jump pluff, even if it's a plus speed Infernape, I actually outspeed it by like two points, I think, which is amazing. Uh, now they end up switching out, and they end up bringing in this Infernape, which they probably should have done earlier. Uh, due to Sleep Claw's rules, I can't use, I can't put more than one Pokemon to sleep at, a, at one time. That's kind of your best way of getting around Jumpluff, but it might be a little too late for old Monkey over here. So, going for the Energy Bell on that thing obviously does no damage. And this is actually one of the first times I've gotten close to the 20 minute time. There's only three minutes left in the match, so I gotta clean some shit up here while I can. Um, I'm just gonna end up going for 
the U-turn here, as you'll see that I'm faster, and I've essentially saved Weezing for this scenario. Now, if it ends up being a mixed Infernape, like a lot of them are, um, it likely will carry Overheat, which will put a hole in my Disco Balls, which is not what you want. You definitely want to see a doctor if that shit happens. Um, but I bring this thing in regardless. It's pretty much my only option here as they end up showing me the fire punch, which is great because that takes, I, I take less than half from that. It reveals that it is going to be life orb. And at this point I can pretty much just sludge bomb this thing. And then after life orb damage, it might actually end up knocking itself out. Plus I'm not afraid because of the fact that jump love outspeeds this thing. Uh, actually reveals that it ends up being a Swords Dance Infernape, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I haven't seen, have not seen a Swords Dance Ape in a very long time, and I respect it. But I go for the Sludge Bomb there. Uh, don't get a Poison, plus it doesn't actually put it in range to where the Life Orb is going to kill it, which is kind of a big bummer. Uh, but literally, as long as I have Jump Luff, I'm essentially safe. Um, so, after the Swords Dance, a Fire Punch does knock me out here. And uh, I end up just going for the Sludge Bomb regardless. Does punch me with some fire. And down goes the Weezing. But essentially did what it needed to do. Uh, Weezing is a great utility mod. Especially it fits well on this team. Able to come in uh, on physical attackers like that. And with Will-O-Wisp support. It's honestly it, it's amazing. But uh, now I bring back in the dude of the hour. And <laughs> since this thing is at literally like 1 HP. After it's life orb damage. And energy ball, ball actually kills it. So it's actually hilarious to see. An Infernape die from a Jump Luff using Energy Ball on it. I thought that was kind of kind of poetic. Um, <laughs> pretty much just caps off how this battle has gone for this dude. And honestly, man, I feel you. You know how many times I've been disrespected by a Jump Luff in my day? Too many times. So I, I figured it was, you know, it was my time to maybe bring one and just kind of see how funny I could get it to do some stuff. And this is actually the first battle I had with this thing. So you can tell... Uh, Jump Luff is quite the disruptor when it comes to <laughs> online battles. Um, battle will end in 42 seconds, but I mean they only have one Pokemon left. So even if it gets knocked down to timer, it is fine. Uh, one more Energy Ball knocks it down to red as Gardevoir is still sleeping over there. Having a nap while Death is just eating. Just eating lunch, eating them leftovers, and overall just being an absolute annoyance. And that is pretty much what I sought out to do today. And I feel like... Uh, it kind of worked out. <laughs> it ends up knocking me down to half, but literally that's fine. He says, if you had more mods, I would leech seed them and take their health, but you don't. So I'll just kill you, and that's going to be the end of the match. Um, we literally finished that with 10 seconds to spare, which is kind of crazy. But, uh, Trey, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I thought that was kind of <laughs> at least an interesting match able to showcase uh, how annoying you know Sleep Powder can be. I got really lucky on hitting all of them, but Jump Luff has proven... You know, that maybe I don't hate it as much as I used to, as long as it's not being used against me. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support on these videos, and I will see you next time. Peace out.